Assalamu alaikum guys, how are you doing? Uh, today I will finish uh, the chapter on uh, bond anchorage and uh, development length and I will cover here uh, two subjects. The first one will be how to draw a moment resistance diagram and then I will be talking briefly about uh, lab splices. So what is a moment resistance diagram? Uh, remember at the end of last class we said when we wanted to cut at an inflection point then we said that my development length should be limited to the uh, nominal moment divided by the ultimate shear plus uh, some distance which would be called LA and which turned out to be at the point of inflections to be uh, 12 dB or uh, D. So one of the things of me not doing that each time I will draw something what I call a moment resistance diagram to kind of uh, compensate for that uh, calculation and I will show you how to do that uh, right now. So let's assume I have a simple beam um, which have a span length of six meters the ultimate load is 60 kN per meter uh, here my depth of D is equal to 439.5 millimeters. Uh, my uh, distance or my cover to the center of the uh, of the uh, 4525 uh, is 60.5 millimeters, and my total width is 300. So I can actually calculate the M ultimate uh, provided by those uh, 4 uh, by uh, 25 uh, bars. And I'm just simply going to put phi being 0.9, area of steel is the 4 uh, phi 25, Fy here is uh, 420 megapascals, D is uh, this right here. Uh, obviously, A, I have calculated from uh, this, which is uh, area of steel Fy divided by 0.85 uh, F prime C. Uh, B and uh, from that I got A to be 115.5 uh, millimeters. So when I plug that in, my ultimate moment is going to be 283.35. So one of the things that I need, I need to know what is the resistance moment for each individual bars. So there's two ways I could do that. First one, which is the simplest one, is I will just take the A that I calculated, which is 115 for all four bars. Then D is constant, Fy is constant, and then uh, this is going to be the area of one bar. So what I'm literally doing is taking 283.35 and then dividing that by four. So I'm getting M ultimate resistance for one bar, which is 70.83. Then multiply that by two, and then you get the resistance for two multiply that by three and then you get the resistance for three bars so this is kind of an approximate way of doing it and since it's usually less than the actual resisting moment so i'm okay with that so what you should have actually done is calculate a for each uh, one which means you would have a1 which is going to be the area of steel of one bar and then you plug that in and then you get the moment resistance for one bar and then you're going to have a for two bars and a for three bars and you can see where, where i'm going with this but again it's too much work uh, you don't need it uh, this is uh, good enough so just calculate the maximum moment for all four bars or five or six whichever bars you have and then divide that by the number of bars and that will be the resistance of one uh, bar so this is how uh, i determined uh, those so the next step would be by actually drawing the moment diagram uh, which is this right here and this value here actually is my because uh, I don't want to make this too messy uh, this is going to be W L square over 8 okay so this is now my actual moment diagram now I'm going to lay the uh, value of the bars so I know that my uh, M ultimate for four bars is 283. So this value here is 283. These are for four bars. Then I'm going to put in for three bars, two bars, and then one bar. So all I did, I just laid the value of the moment for uh, the different bars. Again, four, three, two, one on my moment uh, diagram. Okay. Now, one of the things that we do know is that and this is one of the provisions. I need to have at least one third 
of my bars go continuously uh, into the supports. So for the case that I have, uh, one third is uh, four over three, which is approximately 1.3 bars. And since I don't have 1.3 bars, which means I need to leave these two bars uninterrupted into the supports, which means I cannot do any cuts uh, over here, but I will still show you how to do that if you need to cut do bars. So again, where's my points of inflection? My points of inflections are actually here, right? These two. So here is where I usually do not require to have all four bars. So three bars here is enough. Okay, so if I wanted to cut here, what I taught you in the class before, hey, I have to go there, calculate the nominal moment M and the ultimate shear, and then add to it the D or 12 dB and see if that's more or less than development length. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to this point and then move the required uh, D or 12 dB, whichever is larger. Okay, so in this case, the larger one is D, which is 439 or 439.5 millimeters. So I'm going to move 440 millimeters this way, and then I'm going to drop down here, and then I'm going to go back the development length L, uh, LD. Now I have calculated LD to be uh, based on, I think. Think, I think other cases, which comes to 47 dB, which is 1.2 uh, meters. Okay, so then what I will do, I will connect this point right here, the 12 dB, and then make this line right here. I will do the same thing uh, here. I will go D or 12 dB. Uh, Go down, go back, LD, and then connect these two points. Okay, so this is for if I want to cut for the uh, three bars, meaning I, I only want three bars beyond that point. Okay, uh, I did that more nicely, so I'm just going to erase that. Okay. I just wanted to show you live how this is done. Uh, don't worry. Uh, so, again, let me just erase that. And this is again what I did going from A to A prime, where again the DU12 dB, go down, go back LD, go down, go back LD, connect these uh, two points. So, this is my resistance diagram for the three bars now if i'm going now to move on to the two bars again these are where they're no longer needed this point right here and this point right here i'm going to do the same exact thing move d or 12 d which in my case was the uh, d which was 440 go down go back ld now connect these two points same thing on the other direction go down go back and this is my resistance diagram for the two bars okay now let me just erase that because again i did i did that and let me just do this okay I did, again i did that uh, individually all right so this is now my total uh, resistance uh, diagram. So here is what I'm actually looking at. I want my moment diagram to be within this line. I think let me use a green color maybe. This line right here and this line right here. Which means if my moment diagram is contained within my what I call the resistance diagram, which is again these dotted lines over here. So if my moment diagram is restrained within these lines, then I'm okay, and then I can do these cutoff points. If not, if for some reason, if I go back the LD and then my moment diagram intersects this one, then I cannot use or I cannot cut off at point A. Either I cannot cut off at point A and just let it go, or 
I have to use a smaller diameter bar, which will give me a smaller development length, will kind of move this line outward more, which will allow me to contain the moment diagram within this. Okay, so this is basically uh, how we do a moment resistance diagram. We can do this for continuous beams, simple beams. Uh, so this is kind of uh, giving me an out for not uh, calculating the a nominal moment over the ultimate plus LA each uh, time. And this also gives me an indication if I need a smaller bar. Or, again, like I said, if you do not want to cut off any bars, then just leave it, okay? And then do, any, then do nothing. That's um, up to you. And we talked about it, I guess, at the end of uh, last uh, class. So now this ends the portion of the moment resistance diagram. Here I'm going to mention something briefly about uh, lab splice. Uh, so what is a lab splice? Usually if I have two bars coming from two different directions, and then I will need to lab splice uh, these two uh, together. So there is a required length over which I can do that, and it's different for tension bars and compression bars. For tension bars, I will call that uh, LST. If it's a compression bar, I'm going to call that LSC. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to deal with tension bar first, and then I'm going to go to compression bars. Sometimes you need to uh, to splice bars together because they usually come in length of uh, 6, 12, and, and, and 18. And usually people even cut them even further to like 3, sometimes 4 meters, depending on the project and depending on depends on the length of beams that you have. So sometimes you're going to be a little bit short, so then now you need to... Uh, use the other bars uh, next to it and lab splice them uh, together. Uh, the, so on that, uh, lab splices usually in the code are dealt with in uh, section um, uh, 25.5. Uh, you can't find anything you need on that. Again, like I said, I'm just going to give you briefly uh, about lab uh, splices. Uh, so usually I have to abide by this table for uh, uh, tension lab splices okay so here's telling me for I have two uh, uh, oh, what the condition number one is if the provided area uh, divided by the required area over the length of the splice and again you know the difference between provided and uh, required so if I calculate the moment and let's say I need here uh, 100,000 uh, 1000 millimeters square and I'm providing let's say 3000 and this is the uh, provided divided by uh, required. So if that ratio is bigger than two, then I have to deal with these two conditions. If it's less than two, then it's a, uh, then this is what I call all cases, which means it doesn't matter as long as my provided divided by required is less than two, then it is what we call a class B splice. And then that splice is either going to be the larger of 1.3 the development length and the development length is the length that we calculated previously and I think that was in uh, part one of this uh, series of uh, classes uh, table or uh, the more involved uh, equation uh, so if it's a class B then that length is 1.3 uh, development length and uh, or 300 uh, millimeters now if now we go back to the other uh, condition. If this is more than two, then again, I have two. If the maximum percent of area of steel spliced within the required length is within 50%. So let's say at that section, I have assume uh, eight, five, 20, for instance, and I'm splicing four out of the eight. So here my ratio is about 50%, then that's uh, class A, and then it's going to be the greater of the development length uh, and 300 millimeters. If, let's say, I'm developing out of the eight, maybe six, then that's more than 50%, okay? Then in that case, it will be a, a class B, and then I have to use the 1.3. Let's give you an example. So let's say I want to calculate the lap splice length for 6, 5, 22 tension bottom bars. I have them in two rows. My clear spacing is 65 millimeters and the clear cover is 40, um, giving me FY 420, F prime T 22. Uh, so here I have three cases that I want to calculate that lap splice for. Case number one, if I have three bars uh, and um, 
again, three out of the six. And I have AS provided, divided by AS required larger than two. Uh, case number two, if I'm going to splice four bars and the provided by the required is less than two, and then when all bars are spliced at the same condition, at the same location, excuse me. So I'm going to just splice all six. So let's start. So I'm going to go with uh, case one. I'm going to use the table in 25.423 because I only have limited information. I have no information about the um, ties, uh, shear, so I couldn't even calculate the, uh, the other equation. So I'm just going to use the table instead. Uh, so he gave me the clear spacing, which was about 65 millimeters, which is more than my two uh, diameter of the bar. Uh, clear cover, which is about 40, is more than the diameter of the bar, so then the conditions are met. So I'm going to use the equation, uh, which divides by the factor of 1.7. Uh, I don't uh, size for every one of them is equal to 1. I don't have uh, my FY is 420. Uh, it's not a top bar, and I don't have any epoxy, or there's no mentioning of epoxy anyway, so I'm just going to assume all this to be uh, 1, uh, and this is uh, divided by uh, square root of f prime c, sorry, I guess I missed the square root again, times uh, db, so this is going to be 56, 52.6 times db, so this is about 1.16 1. Uh, 1. meters, so I'm just going to use uh, 1.2. He told me that the provided by required is more than 2, and I'm splicing 3 out of the 6, so to me it's a class A uh, lab splice then the splice would be the larger of the 1.2 or 300 millimeters. So my lab splice would be 1.2 meters. Moving on to case number two. Here is telling me that the provided over the required is less than two. I'm doing four out of six. Then it is a class B splice type. Then that length will be 1.3 times 52.67 times the diameter of the bar, which is about uh, 1.5, so I'm going to use almost 1.55, which is larger than 0 0.3. Um, okay, here I just want to make one simple note. Why did I just multiply that over, all over again? Why I did not just use the 1.2? Remember, in some instances, uh, here, if I use the 1.2, it would be like 1.56, so I'm inclined to use 1.6 meters. But here, since I use the actual numbers, now I can use 1.5. You could tell me, well, it's not a big difference. Well, sometimes in big projects, if you have hundreds of beams and you do most of that, then it, it will become a uh, difference. And I just leave that up to you. Uh, but that's what I did uh, over here. Uh, for case three, since all bars are spliced, then class B splice type again. Then it's the same as the uh, previous case. And that will be uh, moving on to the uh, lap splices in compression. Well, lap splices in compression is actually straight forward. For the columns, not so much. So I'm going to leave the part of the columns if we have time uh, to the end of the column part, uh, which you're probably going to start with maybe this Thursday or uh, the beginning of uh, next week. Uh, for the compression lap splice, uh, if I have 536 or smaller, I must meet one of these, uh, or I have th these three conditions that I meet. So for condition number one or condition A, if FY is less than 420 megapascal, then the uh, uh, splice length is the longer of 0.071 FYDB or 300 millimeters. Okay, so that's one uh, condition. Condition B, if it's between 550 and 420, then it's going to be 0.13 FY minus 24 dB or 300. Uh, condition C, if it's more than 550, then SS is the longer of either this equation here or based on the uh, tension splice uh, calculations, which, which I just showed you an example of. Okay. Uh, for F prime C less than 21 megapascal, then all lengths should be increased by one third. So whatever value you're getting from either A, B, or C, if F prime C is then 121, then you have to increase it by an additional uh, one third. Uh, except, of course, for uh, there's another caveat that 
for bars larger than 536, uh, I cannot uh, use the compression uh, splices. Well, there are some other provisions for that. Again, I'm not going to get into this uh, right now here. I'm leaving that for the columns part if we um, uh, get to that. So this is what I want, uh, basically, as far as splices are concerned for this portion of this uh, class. Uh, you guys um, uh, have a nice day and uh, stay safe.